First Thessalonians. I want to begin reading here. And verse number nine. First Thessalonians chapter two and verse number nine. Amen. Amen. We'll wait for everybody to get there. First Thessalonians chapter two, beginning in verse nine, the text says, For you remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you. We preached unto you the gospel of God. You are witnesses and God also, how holy and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. As you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you, as a father does his children, that you should walk worthy of God who has called you unto his kingdom and glory. And for this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Father, we thank you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. We give you all the honor and the glory. Amen. We are so thankful unto thee on this night Amen. for allowing us to partake of your mercy. And Father, we, amen, will make sure that we exalt your name. Hallelujah. That we will lift it high above ourselves. Hallelujah. And give you what you rightfully deserve. Amen. You deserve the glory. Yes, you did. created us to worship you. Yes, you and to yeah. give you praise. Hallelujah. And we are grateful unto thee. Thank you, and we thank you. Thank in the thank name you. of our Lord yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. For who you are for what you have done. Help us, God, to understand that it's not about us, but it's all about thee. And we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Again, we're coming out of the first Thessalonians chapter 2. And I kind of want to key in on verse 13. Praise God, where he said, for this cause also, thank we God without ceasing. Because when you receive the word of God, which is heard of us, you receive it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here we see the apostle Paul giving accolades to the saints that was in the city of Thessalonica because when he would minister the word of God they received it as it came from heaven Amen. and not from a mere man Amen. hallelujah Amen. you'll find out the reason why much of the time that people struggle to receive the word of God is because they're too busy looking at the man and not receiving it as it come from God. And I'm talking about a man of God that's sure enough declaring glad tidings of great joy. I'm talking about a man of God that is sure enough teaching the truth. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. And it appears in this day and hour in which we live, people struggle to receive the word of God because, again, they receive, they're hearing it as it's coming from a man. Amen. 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 Praise, God. Praise God. But the saints in Thessalonica did not have this problem. Amen. Praise God. And this is why they were blessed. This is why the anointing of God was so heavy upon them in that city. Are you listening to me? Because one of the things you have to understand that if the anointing of God is going to be strong upon your life, you must first receive the love of the truth. 
And the Apostle Paul was declaring the word of God to the saints that was in this city. Praise God. And the reason why they were able to prosper in the spirit is because they received the word of God as if it came from God, which it did. How many know the apostles were vessels of honor? Amen. 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 And Acts chapter 1 verse 2 teaches us that Jesus through the Holy Ghost gave commandments to his apostles. Amen. Praise God. So when you hear the apostles blowing the trumpet and sounding the alarm, Amen. you better not look at them directly. You better look at who is speaking through them. Hello, somebody. Amen. And people have that problem today, and that's why they struggle receiving the word, because they look at it as if it's coming from a man. Right. Right. Come on, somebody. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. In Colossians chapter 3, I want you to look at this. Colossians chapter 3. And I want to look here at verse... Number 23. Colossians chapter 3, beginning at verse 23, the text says, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Did you see that? Amen. Let me read that again. I want you to let these things sit down in your ears. Because I want you to understand, this is, a, this is not about a man. It's about the word of God. I'm going to say that again. This is not about a man. This is about the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 He says in verse 23, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily. Ask to the Lord and not unto me. How many know this thing has to be done from the heart? Amen. You have to receive the love of the truth within your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You can't receive you can't, you can't reject the truth of God because you're too busy looking at a man. Right. Hallelujah. How many know the truth is the truth? Amen. Glory to God. The truth is the truth and you cannot change it. You cannot rearrange it. Praise God. The truth is the truth. Amen. Amen. Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto me. Are you listening? Amen. Praise God. We can read scriptures like Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20 through 33, where it says, Wives, submit yourselves to your husband in everything. And do you not know many women will have a problem doing that? You know why? Because they don't receive that as it's coming from God. They're too busy looking at their husband's shortcomings. They're too busy looking at his faults. They're too busy looking at his failures. And then they use that as their excuse to disobey the word of God. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. And that's why you see a lot of marriages in turmoil. Hallelujah. We don't understand the power of the word. And if we don't obey the word, situation and turn everything around. Yeah. Come on. You know what we want? We want God to turn it around first before we start obeying him. But I come to tell you that ain't gonna never happen. That ain't gonna never happen. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to understand that first thing is first. Yeah. Hallelujah. And the very first thing we must understand, we got to learn to receive the word of God as if it's coming from God and not from a man. Come on. Glory to God. Let's read this again. In Colossians 3.23, he said, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily. As to the Lord and not unto men. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Amen. Because when God gives you a word, and you refuse to obey it because you're too busy looking at man. And do you not know you're not only disobeying God by your, 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 
you know, your, your refusal to submit to the things that he said. But you're also ruining relationships here up on the earth at the same time. Amen. Come on. Amen. See, we're always trying to do things ourselves. And we're always looking for some excuse as if God is going to say, right. oh, okay, I understand. Right. Praise God. People, you ain't going to ever change God's Amen. mind. Amen. He says what he says and he ain't changing what he says. Right. Praise God. Right. You can listen to some false teacher tell you what you want to hear. And have you end up going to a devil's hell? Well, you can take heed to the word of God Amen. and save your soul. Hello? Praise God. He said, whatsoever you do, do it heartily. This thing must be done from the heart. You don't do it just to do it. You don't do it with a bad attitude. You got to do it and be glad to do it. The scripture says in Psalms, serve the Lord with so whenever God commands, do it with gladness. Amen. You got to press beyond man and see Jesus. Amen. I'm doing it as to the Lord. Amen. Because God has commanded me to do it. Because I love him, I'm going to obey. Amen. Come on. Amen. Then the text says in verse 24, Knowing that of the Lord, you shall receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. See that? Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Oh, you can't, you can't, you can't fight this. You cannot fight this. Anything contrary to this is rebellion. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You can write a laundry list of excuses. When you get done, you still gonna have to stand before God and deal with your rebellion. Amen. Come on. Because the day of judgment is no place to pull out your of excuses. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every man must give an account for the things that he has done in his body, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Amen. Come on. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. Again in verse 23, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, not unto men. Because if you do it unto man, Praise God. You really ain't going to do it right. Right. Or you're not going to do it at all. Yeah, right. You're too busy looking at him. You can't even obey God. You know, because he's getting on your nerves. He make you sick. Hello, somebody. Amen. So therefore, you're not even looking at what the Bible says when you're too busy looking at man. Right. Praise God. Yeah. You want to please the flesh. I want to get him back. Hallelujah. I want to resist him. I want to fight him. I want to get him back. All those different things will take place in your heart when you're too busy looking at a man. Amen. Praise God. This is why every child of God needs to walk in love. Because when you walk in love, you're going to do it hardly unto the Lord. And you're going to love your neighbor even as yourself. struggle with it because uh, they just need to grow spiritually. Glory to God. And it don't take you three months, six months, or a year, or beyond that to grow. Because people always use that as an, as an excuse. But the excuse is, is that you've been rebelling against the word of God. Therefore, you try to extend your excuse for another year. And it doesn't work, praise God. Pray, amen? He said, whatsoever you do, do it heartily unto the Lord and not unto men. Amen? Amen. Knowing that of the Lord, you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. Look at this. For you serve the Lord Christ. But he that do it wrong shall receive for the wrong which he has done. And there is no respect of person. Praise God. Are you listening to me? You can come up with every excuse in the book. If God is not hearing your excuses, he's going to deal with you on the day of judgment. Hallelujah. He's not going to deal with the other person. He's not going to play the blame game with you. He's going to deal with you and you alone. Every man must give an account of the things he has done in this body. Praise God. So you can save your excuses. 
Jesus. Matter of fact, just go on, flush them down the toilet. Because they're not going to stand over there just. Come on. We must remember this is about God. It's about serving our Lord Jesus Christ. I do what I do because I'm a servant of Christ. Come on. Despite what he or she has done to me, I still have an obligation before God to obey him and to do it. Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Listen to the text here. Beginning at verse 1. Isaiah the prophet chapter 66. Beginning at verse 1 and verse 2. The scripture reads. Thus saith the Lord. The heaven is my throne. The earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you built unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things has my hand made. And all those things have been. Said the Lord. Watch this. But to this man will I look. Even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit. And they tremble at my word. Now why is God looking for that type of individual? Because that is one who will believe. Oh, 
Hallelujah. Now I wonder did that come from God? Or that's just a man preaching. Hello somebody. Making up his own words. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb of God. Does this make sense? Amen. Amen. We got to understand what it means to fear God. Because we see in Hebrews chapter 11 that Noah feared God. And he began to build that ark for the saving of his house. He believed God. And he began to move with fear. Hallelujah. Come on tonight. See what we have to start doing is receiving the word as it comes from God. You look at man too long, you ain't gonna obey the word of God. Right. Amen. You too busy being vengeful and, 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 and thinking that you you doing you doing whatever you doing against him. Praise God. Praise God. Are you listening? Amen. Ha, amen. Amen. You think you're getting them back, or you're doing it against them? Praise God. But the truth is, you are hurting yourself. But the devil is making us so blind we can't see. We damn our own soul. Amen. Because you cannot re re reject the word of God and be saved. Because if you reject the word of God, you are resisting the Holy Ghost. According to Acts chapter 7 Amen. and verse 51. Amen. Come on somebody. Amen. How can you be saved without the Holy Ghost? How can you be saved without the hearing of the word of God? Receive it as it came from God and not from a man. I believe that's many people's problem. Amen. They got an issue with the one preaching. And they can't even hear the word of God because they got an issue with the with the preacher. Come on. Hallelujah. They don't like something he said. Hallelujah. I don't like how he sounds. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. That's why people are where they are. Because when you reject the word, you resist the Holy Ghost, you ain't getting nowhere with God. Amen. Hallelujah. You're in the same place you was a year ago. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in much cases, praise God, you didn't slid way back. Isn't that what God said to Israel when they backslid? He called Israel a backsliding heifer. Y'all didn't hear what I said. Come on. Did he not call Israel that? Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And Israel backslid because she didn't no longer want to receive God's words and do his will. Solomon said in Proverbs, a backslider shall be filled with their own ways. They stray away from God's word. And they no longer want to walk in his ways. They want to do what is good for them after the flesh. They don't care about pleasing God. They don't care about walking in holiness. Hallelujah. It's all about pleasing the flesh. And doing my will. Hello, somebody. But the devil never told you there are consequences for that. There are consequences for it. The devil will show you a vision of all the fun that's going on in the world and really make you believe you're missing it. But the truth is, you're going to miss Jesus when he comes. Come on. There's nothing more but a trap. To lure you back in his bosom and cause your soul to be damned. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. And this is why everybody must get a what? A love for the truth. Yes. Just read that. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Everybody must get a love of the, for the truth. And I want you to know that the truth does not always feel good. There are some hard sayings in the word of God. 
Amen? There are some hard sayings in the Word of God. Look at this. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Praise God. It says here in verse number 11. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Now these are ones that are already believing a lie. They're already un under a delusion. Amen? Amen? Praise God. God will send apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. He will send a mother in Zion. He will send a brother or a sister to try and wake up them who have come under Satan's spell. In Romans chapter 13, the apostle Paul said, he said, it is high time that we wake out of sleep. Okay. That word sleep in the Greek is hypnia, which means hypnosis. Many people have come under hypnosis. They are under a spell. They have fallen asleep. They've been bewitched. Praise God. And God will send somebody with the truth to wake you up. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Now, if people continue to reject the, the, the truth of God and they refuse to come out from under the lie or that delusion, then the scripture says God shall send them strong delusion mm -hmm. that they should believe a lie. Mm -hmm. So when God sends a strong delusion, you will never be able to get out from under it. Amen. Praise God. Your fate will be sealed for eternity. Come on. Amen. But the scripture goes on to say in verse 12, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. God has given everybody an opportunity to receive the love of the truth. Amen. 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 He said that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but they had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, can I ask you a question? Why do people reject the truth as much as they do? Because they have pleasure in unrighteousness. They don't want to give up their fleshly pleasure, their worldly pleasures. They count that more valuable than their soul. But it's all temporary. And then what it says in Hebrews chapter 11, sin is only for a season. But the devil will keep you spiritually blind and you won't even see that. All you can see is I'm having fun. I'm enjoying my flesh. I'm doing what I like doing. That's all you can see. That's all he will let you see. But the enemy is blinding you. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, he said, The God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. Amen. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ shall shine unto them. Amen. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Amen. Praise God. Let's go back up to verse 10. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 10. Let's read down again. He said, And with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Look at that. How many understand? It is the truth that will save you. Amen. Jesus said it in the Gospel of John chapter 8 verse 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That's right. Amen? Amen? There's no compromise with this. Amen. There's no compromise with this. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Again, he said, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved, and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. Now remember, they already believe in a lie. Mm -hmm. They're already under a delusion. And God will send somebody with the truth to wake them up out of their slumber. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To break that spell that they have come under. Hello, somebody. Amen. And if they reject the truth, praise God. God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And this is why a lot of people today, they are believing lies. Even after being presented the love of the truth on multiple occasions, God has already begun sending a strong 
delusion on various people. And they will never, ever come out from under it. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? He says that for this cause, God should send a strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. And the reason why they refuse to believe the truth is because they're too busy having pleasure in unrighteousness. Yeah. Praise God. Praise Are you listening to me? I still believe what Jesus said in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, verse 25 through 33. He said, if any man come after me, let him take up his cross, deny himself, and come after me. He said, if you don't do it, you can't be my disciple. This is how you know there's a lot of people that are professing to be Christian that are not Christian at all. Because they're not taking up their cross. They're not dying to the flesh. They're not losing their life in this world. But they're trying to hold on to the world. They try to, they, they try to, in, to continue enjoying the pleasures of unrighteousness. Well, you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve two masters. Your loved one hate the other. Hold the one, despise the other. You cannot serve God in heaven. Praise God. Are you listening to me? God is not going to share us with the world. He's not going to share us. He wants you all to himself. Are you listening? Amen. He wants you all to himself. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does this make sense? Amen. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, my brothers and sisters, this is one of the reasons why a lot of people struggle receiving the word. Because they're too busy looking at a man. They think it's him saying it. You can even show them the scripture. They still think it's him saying it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. They become so spiritually blind, they can look right in the pages of Scripture, praise God, and see what the Scripture says, and still find it. And yes, there are things we have to break down to its lowest common denominator so to give you a broader understanding of what Jesus and his apostles are breaking out. Come on, somebody. This is why people are the way they are. Amen. They are caught up in what they want to do or what they don't want to do, and then they try to justify. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you have to give an answer to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? You're going to have to give an answer to God because God sends apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. And I'm not talking about any so-called apostle. I'm not talking about any so-called prophet. We got a lot of folks out here calling themselves apostle and prophet and they ain't no apostle and they ain't no prophet. How is it that the apostles and prophets today contradict much of what the apostles and prophets preached in the scriptures? That's proof right there. They ain't no apostle and they definitely ain't no prophet. Come on tonight. Hallelujah. He will send evangelists. He will send pastors and teachers. He will send a mother in Zion. A brother or a sister in the faith that's been taught the truth. To warn you. To open up your blinded eyes. So you might escape the rest. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And one of the ways you know a lot of people, one, one of the ways you know a lot of people, his conscience is becoming seared, is because they're no longer convicted. You can show them what the Bible says, they still ain't convicted. They're still trying to find some way around to do what they want to do. They're still trying to come up with a way to not believe what the scripture says and continue to do what they want. I heard a young lady say to me one time, I know the Bible says this and says that, but I got a problem with that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, you just got a problem. You just got a problem. It is a problem you ain't gonna never solve. Hallelujah. That's a problem you ain't gonna never solve. Amen. Because I really know that the word of God says 
what it says. And it means what it says. God is not asking you whether you think it's right or what do you feel about this. Amen? Amen. He's not asking you that. The apostle said in Romans, let God be true and every man a liar. Come on. Are you listening to me? Praise God. I think what we need to do today is we need to repent. We need to repent, praise God. You can look at me funny. Praise God, but I'm going to say the same thing. We need to repent today. Because how is it that so many people love God, then when he begins to talk to them, they fight just about everything he says. Amen. And much of the time they fight everything he says is because they're too busy looking at the man that's blowing the trumpet. To hear the voice of thunder. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Am I making sense? Let's go back to our foundations. A little scripture. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Beginning in verse 11, he says, And as you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father does his children. Did you see that? Amen. Then he says in verse 12, That you would walk worthy of God who has called you unto his kingdom and glory. And for this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Look at that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wonder why the apostle was thanking God without ceasing. Hallelujah. Because he had a people in the congregation of Thessalonica that humbly submitted themselves and obeyed the word of God. Amen. They received it not as it came from man, but as it came from God. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Amen. This is what he's saying here, verse 13. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard of us. See that? How many know God is going to use a man to blow the trumpet? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The psalmist said how God will work a work in, in, in your day, and God will use a man to declare it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He says again in verse 13, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. For you, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which is in Judea, are in Christ Jesus. For you also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. Praise God. Are you listening to this? How many understand we need to have a spiritual ear? And we need to focus on God's word. Hallelujah. That's what we need to do. And that's why a lot of people struggle. They're too busy looking at the man. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They allowed the man to blind them from what God said. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. They have some, some hatred in their heart toward him. Amen. Or something he did, praise God. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. What about what you did? Hallelujah. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Amen. We, we can be su such hypocrites in the church. 
We never look at what we did and we're not holding ourselves accountable for the things that we do. But oh, we all of a sudden want to act like we're super spiritual when it comes to somebody else. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In this last day, you can't afford to let anybody hinder you. Amen. You can't let the devil hinder you. You know, he's always going to try to hinder you. Yes. Praise God. But you got to receive the word as it comes from God Amen. when it is truly the, the truth Amen. that is pertaining to the scriptures. Come on. Amen. 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 Don't look at the man as it's coming from him. Hallelujah. And that's where people struggle. Everything you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Amen. Amen. Get your eyes off of man and put your mind on God. Set your heart upon him. Amen. Get a spiritual ear so you can hear his words. And let it come into your heart and transform your life. Come on. 